Okay, so there are a lot of tools to study for the USMLE, right? So I thought, hey, wouldn't it be really fun to spend an entire afternoon ranking them all? Now, keep in mind, these are just my opinions based on my experience alone. If you've already purchased one of these tools and it so happens that it ranked it very poorly, don't panic, just ask for a refund and send them my video. Okay, kidding aside, all the study tools I'm gonna mention in this video are very useful and you can learn a ton by using any one of them. It's just that some of them offer more value than others, at least in my opinion. So that's what I took into account to make this particular video. But don't take this as a gospel by any means. And if you disagree with anything I said here, do let me know in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's get on with the ranking. Wait a minute. Before we do the ranking, I want to show you how you can study more efficiently using the sponsor of this video, UPDF. So UPDF is a PDF editor, and when a PDF editor translates to in real life is convenience. For instance, instead of doing what 80% of medical students do and having to purchase, decover, and bind a book, such as the first tape just to annotate it, UPDF allows you to annotate whatever you want with just the push of a button. In this way, you can add sketches, comments, or even entire paragraphs without losing any time whatsoever. And if you're running out of space, don't sweat it. You just need to push this button right here, organize the PDF, and then add as many pages as you could possibly want. But besides annotation and reading, the magic of UPDF is that it puts a just a click away everything you would ever want to do with a PDF. You want to share the document you're reading? Instead of having to open your browser and search for Gmail, you just click this button right here, and that's it. You want to protect your document. Instead of having to use a different app, just click this button right here and set up your password. You want to convert the PDF to another format like an image. Well, don't look for sketchy converters in Google. Just click this button right here and convert to whatever you want. That is the magic of UPDF. It makes your workflow convenient. And so if anything I just mentioned sounds interesting and you use either one of these platforms, make sure to download for free UPDF and try out all the features. Bear in mind that one license can be used across all of your devices. Finally, if you like what you see, remember to use my discount link to get a 42% of discount in your purchase. Thanks UPDF for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's start with the first one, Sketchy. So I love the idea of Sketchy, using visual retrieval cues to help you memorize difficult topics. It's a great idea. And in fact, according to research, it's a far superior method to help you memorize and rather than just repeating the information over and over again with what we call rote memorization. So that by itself would kind of give Sketchy an S tier. However, there's a couple of problems. Number one, the USMLE is really less about memorizing for the sake of memorizing concepts and more about learning how to use concepts in an applied and interconnected manner. Additionally, research has shown that visual cues work best when, are, when they are self-made. That was in, in fact one of the points I try to emphasize in the comment section of my last video, where I walk you through a mental palace of the antiretroviral agents. So yeah, overall I think Sketchy is a good complementary resource to watch I don't know, every now and then, especially for those topics you're having a really hard time remembering, but I wouldn't use it religiously or anything like that. Okay, moving on, we have the infamous UWorld. And this, of course, goes in the S tier. And no surprise here, right? First of all, it's a study resource that uses the best learning technique we know, the testing effect but it uses this technique in the best way possible, like with the most similar questions to the actual exam, also the best concise and yet comprehensive explanations, and overall the best quality possible. My only issue with the QBank is that I've given them more than 1500 bucks probably, and in return I'm just constantly reminded of how stupid I am, so that pisses me off. But besides that, they are they are amazing. It's hands down one of the best study tools without a doubt. Okay, next we have Anki. And I'm probably gonna get some heat for this and some hate for this, but I would probably rank Anki in the B tier as well. Because again, space repetition is good and memory is important for sure. I, I can disagree with that. But you can also get space repetition from question banks. And that type of space repetition not only teaches you the concepts, but also how to use the concepts, which I think is much more important. Uh, and that is something that Anki simply cannot do. It can teach you how to use the concepts. So I would rank Anki as another great complementary resource to help you memorize, you know, those tough cookies that your brain is having a hard time remembering. But I wouldn't dedicate more than, let's say, an hour a day to review flashcards. I, I think that if you need more than two to three hours a day to review flashcards, you're probably wasting time. And you could spend that time doing something more valuable, like solving more questions. Okay, next we have past this. And I'm really sorry to say this, but I have to put this one in C tier. 
Pastes, for those who don't know, is like this question bank platform, and I used to love them. In fact, I one of the I was one of the early subscribers of them when they were just starting out, and I really liked them. But for the USMLE, I found two big problems with this platform. One, they focus excessively in low yield content, things that are just irrelevant. So you spend most of your time learning, yeah, semi irrelevant details. And the second problem was uh, that the question style is really different to the ones in the real exam, in the sense that the questions are not hard because the question itself is hard, but instead because they just pick a very God forbidden detail and they ask you, and you of course don't know the details, so you get the question wrong. And so you think, oh, I have to know all of these peripheral details when in fact you need to master the most important central details to have a good score. So yeah, overall it's not a good, it's not a bad QBank, but it trains di different skills than the ones you actually want to train, if that makes any sense. Okay, next we have my favorite review book for the USMLE, which are the Crush series, especially the Crush for Step 1. I love that book. And of course, I'm gonna be very biased, but I have to put this one in the A tier. So what can I say? I just love this book. This book was one of the ones that really built my foundations for the USMLE. It allowed me to enter dedicated with a mindset not of memorizing a bunch of facts, but actually understanding what I'm going to be asked and comprehending it. Uh, now, as I've said in other videos, I don't think this is a best tool for a dedicated period to cram in a couple of months. No, I think this is, this is the type of resource that works better when you read it years before ever thinking about getting to dedicated to set some solid ground and make everything easier. That's where this book really, really shines. Okay, next we have one of the tools that I actually hate the most, which are the MBME self-assessments. And I really hate these ones. The only reason I don't put them in the D tier is because some of them are really useful at estimating your score somewhat accurately, so it's a tool we need. But as a study resource per se, they are truly awful. Like they cost like 40 bucks, include no explanations whatsoever, and they expire. Like what the hell, man? So if you want my advice, I would only purchase the most predictive MBME one, like only one MBME to estimate my score a couple of weeks away from my exam, and that's it. For everything else, I would just stick with the assessments from UWorld, which are very good, and the offline NVMEs, and you can Google that if you don't know what I mean. So yeah, because of all of that, C tier, at best, probably more D tier. Okay, next we have MedBullets, and I truly love this resource, especially because it has an amazing free version available. In fact, I would say that this is currently the best free USMLE study tool I know. Uh, it also has a paid version, which I guess it offers more features, but the a thousand or so questions that they offer for free are plenty already. Now, are they you world level of quality type of questions? Ah, of course not, but they are an amazing resource nonetheless, uh, at least to get started, to sort of dip your toes in the USMLE water and familiarize yourself with the question format before entering dedicated. They help you realize things like how long it takes you to review a blog, the type of mindset you gotta have when solving and reviewing these questions. And so so yeah, all in all, I think it's a great resource for what it costs and what it offers. So in my opinion, solid B tier. Okay, next we have a couple of sort of similar resources, which include some form of interactive videos and a question bank. And we're talking about Osmosis and USMLE RX. And these guys have question banks that are remarkably similar to the ones at MedBullets. But remember, MedBullets was free. This is not. So if that was the only thing they offered, I would probably be tempted to put them in the C tier. However, while these resources lack in quality of questions, they compensate in quality of explanations because both of them have, as I said, amazing interactive videos. So yeah, solid, solid B tier for those, just for those videos, basically. Now, in a similar vein, we have Physio. And Physio, as far as I know, is only a, it's a video only platform, right? And I used this platform during my step one prep to improve my weakest subject at the time, which was, I think, biochemistry and something else, I don't know what. Uh, so yeah, I, I must say that I was really impressed with the quality of these explanations in Physio. Disclaimer, as I just said, I didn't watch everything, just like a couple of blogs from a couple of subjects, but the things, the, the videos I reviewed were really, really top notch. So in my opinion, Physio probably earns itself a spot in the B tier as well. Now, next we have Kaplan, and just as with past test, I decided to put Kaplan in C tier. So yeah, I tried Kaplan, in fact, I paid for it, and I went through all of the question bank, I finished the entire question bank, as well as the couple of self-assessments they offered at the moment, and also some of the videos and lectures they featured in the platform. 
And I must say, I was very, very disappointed. For starters, Kaplan questions were the least similar to the actual exam, at least compared to all of the other question banks. Additionally, explanations were truly awful. Okay, no, that, that's unfair. Uh, they, to be fair, seven out of 10 times the explanations were fine. I, I, don't, I mean, nothing spectacular, but they were fine. But three out of 10 times, the explanations were truly awful, like very mediocre. That this is the QBank where I needed the most to go outside of the platform to look for explanations because the feedback I was giving in the question just didn't leave me clarity about why it was A and not B. It just provided like a half fast explanation. On top of that, the self-assessments were a total joke, like the worst self-assessments I've made because the questions, total mess, totally irrelevant explanations, mediocre at the best. And on top of all of that, they didn't even offer a score estimate. Like why the hell, what the hell? Why would you offer a self-assessment if you couldn't assess what all students are desperately trying to assess? It makes no sense. And regarding the lectures, nah, they were kind of a toss up. I mean, some lectures were great, don't get me wrong, really, really great depending on the professor, but other professors were just a waste of time in, in my humble opinion. So yeah, overall I have to put Kaplan in C2, sorry. Oh, and regarding the review books of Kaplan, they are not terrible by any means. Some of them are actually really good, but I still prefer Crush for almost every subject. So. All right, next we have Ambos, and in marked contrast with Kaplan, I was actually very impressed with Ambos. In fact, I was so impressed that Ambos has been the only brand to which I've done dedicated videos in this channel without getting paid absolutely nothing to do so. Like literally, Ambos has never paid me a single time to say anything nice about them. And yet they're probably the one brand I recommend the most in my videos because I truly believe they offer an amazing product to medical students. First of all, they offer a single platform that works for both all of the USMLE steps, as well as for general medical study. They are, as far as I've experimented, the only platform that manages to do both things successfully. Now, as far as features go, the platform is packed with them. First of all, they have a question bank with incredible questions and not like incredible like med bullets. I mean, incredible like you world. They are truly high, high quality questions. But on top of that, they also offer a medical library, which is not only really friendly and efficient to use, but also really great at explaining topics without losing itself in pointless details like many other books. Now, I will admit that Ambos explanations are not the better than UWorld. I still believe that UWorld feedback is the best of the bunch. However, um, what one thing that Ambos offers that UWorld doesn't is the library embedded and integrated into the question bank. So whenever you answer a question and you receive feedback and you are not happy with the feedback, you can just click away in whatever you want and that takes you straight to the library. So they may not be the best at providing efficient uh, feedback, but they are truly the most comprehensive in that regard. Okay, next we have the infamous first date. And this is probably the other one that I'm gonna get hate and hit for, but I have to put this one in the C tier as well. So what's the deal with the first date? Simple, it is very good at what it does. It is a great kind of compendium, kind of summary of medicine, basically. And at that job, they excel. I truly can't think of any other book that summarizes as efficiently everything they summarize. But the problem is precisely that, the format. In their attempt to summarize absolutely everything, they cut out all of the fluff, all of the explanations. They just leave the facts, one fact after another after another. And I'm sorry to say this, but reading a bunch of facts one after another is a very bad learning strategy. It doesn't maximize comprehension, obviously, but it also doesn't maximize memory and retention because no, rereading is a bad form of review, in case you haven't heard, that are literally like these meta-analyses comparing different review strategies, and almost all of them conclude that rereading has terrible return on investment on memory gains compared to strategies like self-testing. And in fact, I have several videos on the matter even in case you're interested. So yes, I get what people mean when they argue that no one should go into the exam without knowing the first date uh, forwards and backwards, but I just think that the best way to learn the content on the first date forwards and backwards is not by reading the first date. That's all. Next we have Boards and Beyond. And in my opinion, this is the best video review resource of the bunch. Disclaimer, it's not the most interactive one. It's not the most fun one to watch either, but it is just so effective at teaching you what you need to know that in my opinion is mind blowing. It, it, I mean, is it more effective than doing questions in your world? Totally not, absolutely not. That's why I won't put it in the S tier. 
But if you're set on watching videos to learn the USMLE, this is the first resource I would recommend without hesitation. Okay, another really good resource is this one, Pathoma. I personally use the videos, not the book, uh, although I think that the videos and the book pretty much say the same thing, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, I really like the explanations. I think that for anyone who struggles in thinking kind of from a first principles perspective, Pathoma is a great resource to use, especially if you watch like the first few modules on the basics like inflammation and injury. Those are really the ones that teach you how to think from a first principles perspective. So that wants, that makes me want to put Pathoma in A tier. But ah, everything else, especially the videos about the systems per se, neurology and such, are not that amazing compared to BNB in my opinion. So all in all, I think that this probably goes in the B tier. All right, and finally, I decided to include one last tool, which is your medical school. And I have to include that one in the A tier. Not because your medical school lectures are particularly high yield, mine's absolutely weren't, but because no amount of intensity ever beats consistency. We sometimes believe that choosing one resource over another or studying it really, really, really hard for these couple of months before our exam will make all the difference in our score. But the truth, as far as I've seen, is that as important as those couple of months are before your exam, they are just 60 days. What you are and what you know and what you bring to the table in exam day will depend much more on the years you spent learning medicine rather than on this last 60 days you tried to cram everything. So. Keep that in mind and put your work in daily because just as in life, in the USMLE, success is the pinnacle of the iceberg. You can see the score, you can see, well, you can see the score in the step one, but you can see the score in the step two at least, then you can see dedicated, but beneath all of that, the most important thing is every day of the path that preceded that dedicated. And that is the most important thing of this whole iceberg. But yeah, medical school is still low yield as fuck, so no S tier for you, baby.